So I've always wanted one of those cool custom keyboards. They look amazing. They feel awesome. And I could swear that, you know, for gamers, they improve performance. That's probably a lie, but you know what I mean. They're awesome, and I wanted to make one. So I decided to build one and 3D print one at that. This is a culmination of all of the mistakes that I've made over the past month and a half. It's been one of the most arduous projects because frankly, there's just so much going on that I did not take for granted. And I hope you really enjoy it. Now, PCB Way sponsored this entire video. They made the PCBs for the keyboard and I've never seen anything of this level of quality. I showed my friends, I'm an engineering student if you guys don't know, but I took the PCBs, I ran them over to my friends and I showed them just how good they are. I know, I feel pretty bad about this. Uh, I don't want to be one of those YouTube people that are constantly shilling stuff, but when I opened these things and I saw them in my hands and I started soldering on them, suffice to say that I am completely sold. You really, if you're doing any type of work like this, I cannot recommend them enough. They are amazing. So thank you very much PCB Way for sponsoring this entire video and my channel. That being said, this video is really just a combination of mistakes. And for those of you that are experienced at building keyboards and that are into the hobby, I just want to say I, I really like it. I don't know if it's for me because there's so much going on. So try and go easy on me. I realized I did a lot of things wrong and I can only hope that next time I attempt this, I will do less things wrong, but you know, no promises. And a couple more disclaimers while I'm at it. The keycaps I went with later in the video, they are not the original keycaps. I was told to be very clear about this and they are apparently i don't even know the name of them but they are apparently the knockoff version of like a really popular set of keycaps i'm sure you guys know them so feel free to list them the, the actual name in the comments but i saw how much some of these sets were going for in canon keys and i i could not do it it was just way too expensive there's no way in hell I would have been able to afford this. In fact, just to be able to afford the parts I did, it took me a couple weeks to get the money outside of the fact that PCB Way was kind enough to sponsor the PCBs, which I thought was the most expensive part of the build, but no, I was sorely mistaken. And much like anything involving a hobby, the amount of money you could throw at this is just insane. So... I had to pivot a couple times. I am, for those of you that know and that care about this, I'm using linear switches. Don't know the name of the switches. I'm gonna try and link everything in the description below. Essentially, they, they are very nice, but they're not like super expensive. And I'm really happy with how they feel and how they perform. Also, the gasket was a huge problem. It's a 50A gasket, if I remember correctly. Had nothing but issues with it, with the fitment. I mean, really, the whole, the whole, the biggest problem throughout this entire experience was fitment. That was a headache. But the biggest issue by far was the, the PC plate, the polycarbonate plate I used. You'll see it later on in the video. The polycarbonate plate refused to fit. I've printed the case maybe three times over, not because, well, I mean, the first two times I had the wrong settings, it didn't, you know, I stopped the print halfway, didn't quite work. But when I got the settings down, the cases were coming out pretty good. Downside is that the polycarbonate plate just never fit. And it's not an issue with Canon keys. And it's not an issue with, you know, anything other than the fact that I'm pretty sure I printed this in the wrong material. So I went with ABS and they were using PLA or maybe I'm printing the one that's entire like one piece because I really didn't want to have a seam in the center and I guess that seam does add some tolerances for the actual PC plate but once again 
PCB way came in clutch because the PCB fit in like a glove. So I have no idea why the plate did not work. I even printed two plates, both in ABS, but and they fit great, but they sounded like hell. They were so bad. It Anyway, I decided to not put the plate on because it was actually hurting the build more than it was doing anything good for it. So if that is sacrilegious, I do apologize ahead of time. Again, I am new to this. So cut me a little slack here. It was an arduous process. It took way longer than it should have. I had to send parts back. And again, thank you PCBWay for having the patience to wait a month and a half for a project that should have been done in about two weeks or so. But that being said, outside of all of the stress that it cost me because I did not want to let you know my sponsor down as far as timelines are concerned i actually really enjoyed the build and oh another honorable mention my friend helped me with it and i gotta be honest if it wasn't for him this would not have happened because it was it was getting a little bit to be too much for me at some points but anyway moving along the stabilizers they're not the best stabilizers uh, to be fair with you, I know what stabilizers do. I don't know what the good ones are. And I, at the end of everything, I realized I had not ordered any lube for them. So I did, they're not lubed. This thing could probably sound better. It could definitely sound better. But again, it's just too much to deal with. Maybe in the future, I will reprint the case again and re-lube the, oh sorry, or lube, not re-lube, but lube the stabilizers and polish the build a little bit more. But for the time being, this is how this keyboard will be. And it feels really, really good. I know that there's an obligatory sound test, but I my place, there really wasn't a quiet enough environment where I could also record to get an accurate sound test. So unfortunately I had to omit that. I'm going to try and make it a short in the future so that you guys could see, but compared to my Razer keyboard, that thing is amazing. So, and I'm not hating on my Razer keyboard. My Razer keyboard is really good to me. I enjoy it quite a bit, but it's one of those things that, I mean, this has nicer parts inside of it because I chose everything by hand. Or I should say my friend helped me choose everything by hand. One downside if to anyone who's trying to do this, you, this is something that scared me and I thought the project was not going to be completed. But outside of loading firmware into the board, you also have to load like a, a like almost a second bit of firmware into it. I don't know where this firmware goes. I, I think it goes on the app mega chip on the actual PCB, but I had to use like a different application to just basically tell it that it was an HID device or that's what I believe it was. It, it took some looking around on the internet and then it worked. Yeah. Uh, QMK firmware. That part was pretty straightforward. It was mainly the the fact that I had to do the other stuff again, this was entirely on the user. This had everything to do with the fact that I just did not know this was something that needed to happen because we're used to getting keyboards in the mail and them being perfectly functional off the bat. And that's not the case here. You're getting a, well, in some cases you're getting a bare PCB in other cases, you're getting an assembled PCB. I got both and used the assembled one. And I have to be honest with you, I did not know you had to do that. But once you figure it out, it's fairly straightforward. You're just going to have to look in like a corner of the internet somewhere to find the information you need because it is a rather niche uh, thing you have to do. For those of you with a keen eye, and I know there are many of you out there, you'll notice that there's some pretty severe stair stair stepping on the sides of the case that is just a 
nature of the beast. I could have decreased that by using a nozzle with a like a thinner nozzle. Unfortunately, I don't have a thinner nozzle. 0.4 is as low as I can go. And with this type of stuff, um, at that angle, you're pretty much always going to have some stair stepping. M Thankfully, most of it is on the flat side underneath the PCB. And it's not visible. And honestly, when you're kind of using the keyboard, it's not really... Uh, an issue because you don't you're not really paying attention to that all that much but it is there and it should be something i wanted to mention another thing this is an open source project from katano or k katano on github it is the back and echo 65 i pretty probably should have mentioned this earlier in the video but i mean you know and stuff happens and one thing that I really wish would have been bolded and somewhere in here in the GitHub is the fact that this does not have any RGB lights at all. At all. It's just not pretty much non existent. So keep that in mind because I was very disappointed when i got my pcb in and again this is completely user error has nothing to do with you know the katano back on echo 65 project although i mean they could put that somewhere in there i guess this is really for enthusiasts and they, enthusiasts don't really care about rgb but i do i like colors i enjoy colors they're pretty all right but anyway so yeah i just i kind of wish that would be something that was more clear because it definitely took some, should I say, uh, magic off of the build. And also, the keycaps I used, I really like. But there's a bit of a space on either end of the space bar. And none of the space bars I had worked. Now, I don't know if it's because this is like essentially like a clone on Amazon, you know, the pretty much the only thing I was able to afford because I could not pay hundreds of dollars for a keycap set, but I don't know if it was because of that or because maybe I got the wrong keycap set. I don't know. I'm sure you guys can let me know in the comments, but that was one thing that really, uh, really kind of disappointed me. We had to go back and forth on that quite a bit. It doesn't, I don't know if it shows in the video that much. I tried to, no, I don't want to say hide it, but definitely not show it. So, yeah. Yeah, I really just want to know what you guys think. Uh, any tips you can leave, I'd be highly, it would be highly appreciated. Uh, you always enjoy hearing your feedback on these kinds of things. Sorry if this video is a little bit uh different than one you're used to i'm trying to increase the production quality of my videos but it's it's, it's a lot i'm also a full-time student and i have a full-time job or rather i have a part-time job and i'm a full-time student on top of doing all of this so it's a uh, it's a little difficult to uh you know get everything done especially during finals but yeah thank you very much for watching i wish you all the best and I'll see you next time.